The 18th regular session of the Human Rights Council was held in Geneva from 12 to 30 September 2011. The session was opened by the High Commissioner for Human Rights, Navi Pillay. We know that when the economic going gets rough, it is the poor who bear the brunt of the crisis. These are the groups and individuals who are entitled to protection and safety not those private actors who, in the first instance, were instrumental in stoking financial and economic unrest. The popular protests in the Arab world were on the main issue discussed during the session. The Council held a panel discussion on the promotion and protection of human rights in the context of peaceful protests. It also heard from the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights fact-finding mission on Syria. The OSCHR fact-finding mission on Syria found a pattern of widespread or systematic human rights violations by Syrian security and military forces, including murder, enforced disappearances, torture, deprivation of liberty, and persecution. It is our assessment that the scale and nature of these acts may amount to crimes against humanity. It also heard from the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights about its visit to Yemen and the current situation there. We call on the government to end attacks against civilians and civilian targets in full compliance with Yemen's obligations under international human rights law. The Commission of Inquiry on Libya also presented an update of its work to the Council, and the new government of Libya took the floor just days after it was officially recognized by the General Assembly. The Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights also presented a report on the human rights situation in Belarus. Information gathered by the Office concerning the government's action on the day of the presidential election on 19 December last year and its aftermath indicates a pattern of violations of human rights. During the session, the independent expert on Sudan presented his report to the Council. The outcome report of Sudan's Universal Periodic Review was also adopted at this session. Both Sudan and the new country of South Sudan were represented during these discussions. The dire emergency in the Horn of Africa is both the product of devastating natural phenomenon and the failure of governments individually and collectively to meet their preventive and remedial human rights obligations. The emergency situation in the Horn of Africa was also addressed during the session. The independent expert on Somalia also addressed the situation in the region while presenting his report. The effects of the unprecedented drought and the resultant famine in many parts of the country, combined with the vicious armed conflict that has ravaged Somalia for the last two decades, have wreaked unimaginable havoc on the lives of its population. The Council adopted reports on the human rights situation in 16 countries under its Universal Periodic Review. The Council further held nine interactive dialogues with special procedures mandate holders, including the Special Representative of the Secretary General on Children in Armed Conflict, the Working Group on Mercenaries, and the Special Rapporteur on Racism. The Council also held panel discussions on the realization of the right to development, the right to health of older persons, the integration of a gender perspective in the Council's work, and on the promotion and protection of human rights through tolerance and reconciliation. Half a day was also devoted to the rights of indigenous peoples, during which the Council held interactive dialogues with the Special Rapporteur and the Expert Mechanism on Indigenous Peoples, and a panel discussion on the role of languages and cultures in the protection of well-being and identity of Indigenous peoples. At the end of the session, the Council adopted 35 texts, among which it decided to request the General Assembly to reconsider Libya's membership, to hold a panel on promotion and protection of freedom of expression on the Internet, on promoting human rights through sport, in particular the Olympic and Paralympic Games. It established new mandates on the promotion of a democratic and equitable international order and on the promotion of truth, justice, reparation, and guarantees of non-recurrence. It also decided to extend four other mandates.